And good morning and welcome to Touch Base Daily. My name is Ron Foster and I'm touching base with you as I do every day. I hope you're all doing well. And um, yeah, today is a new day and um, it's Eclipse Day. It's Eclipse Day. Are you guys um, going to be going out to watch the eclipse? Are you in the New York area? Are you in the, what they call it, the the line of uh, uh, what called the target line. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's going on? Lisa says, "I'm." Uh, I don't know what that means, Lisa. Are you going to see it? Uh, Lauren's in the building. Good morning, Lauren. Yes, Lauren's going to be out there. Uh, good morning, Serena is in the building. She says, "Good morning, everyone." Um, yeah, so it's going to be a good day out there. I do believe it's going to be a good day. And um, so anyway, I hope that everyone catches it. Uh, I am going to be obviously going out there later on to check it out. And um, I am excited. Now, thank you, son. The line of totality. <laughs> I got a little, I got the tongue tied, mentally tongue tied. How about that? Janet's in the building. Omar's in the building. Hannah is in the building. So good to see everyone. Gwendolyn's in the building. Gary is in the building. Oh, hello, folks. Hello, hello. So, um, yeah. Um, did you guys have a great weekend? Um, I, well. This weekend, I'm gonna first of all let me tell let me ask what you what did you guys do this weekend? Put in the comment box. Did you do anything that was special? Anything exceptional? What did you do this weekend? I see Aunt Adrian saying hi, Auntie G. <laughs> now that's gonna be our family, uh, our family joke. <laughs> so, um, what did, what did you guys do? on the Saturday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um, yesterday, I found myself, uh, I got up late. That's just, I got up late. I got up on time. Uh, you know me and the social, I go on to my um, political shows. I was uh, absorbed with that on um, George Stephanopoulos and also um, CNN and uh, CBS News and checking out all the latest news and politics and what's going on around the world. And uh, and then after that, I walked out and grabbed my wagon, put my photos in the cart, and um, set up my table in front of um, the coffee shop that I always hang out at and work from. And um, I was able to, I did not sell anything yesterday, but what I did do, uh, and, I, and this is where I pretty much, the reason why I go out there, um, is to meet neighbors. I end up meeting a whole, I met about, I guess about eight neighbors that I had really good conversations with. Shout out to Heather, uh, shout out to Pop uh, Popoff. Um, so that was really cool meeting those folks and a bunch of others. And, uh, and just talking about photography. Uh, there was one young lady, I mean, Heather, who I met, she, she stopped by. She was like, oh, my gosh, I love your work. I love your photos. And she goes, I used to be a, ph a photographer. I said, excuse me, I used to be? And um, she said, yeah, I, I used to be a photographer. Uh, I stopped. I was, you know, I used to, you know, make money as a photographer. That was my job. And uh, usually people get burnt out when they are do it as a profession and work for a company and also – when you work for a company, you don't get to um, you don't get to create the way you want to create your photography. So, long story short, she ended up leaving uh, photography altogether, and we ended up talking about, you know, maybe she should get back into it. And she she came to when she was looking at the photos, she was like, "I think I'll." She goes, "You make me want to pick up the camera again," and I said, "Well, then mission accomplished. Mission accomplished." I said, you know, it's not important, you know, everything is not transactional in the world. And um, I really do, I really do enjoy just being out there, uh, meeting neighbors that I don't know uh, or that may see me online, but they don't know me in person. 
And it's just so beautiful to be out there. But a shout out to Heather. Hope you pick up that camera again. She decided to also follow me on Instagram. And uh, also, hopefully, she's maybe looking at YouTube because she's on. she followed me on Instagram. So shout out to Heather from Clinton Hill here in our neighborhood. Uh, I see Lauren here says, rest and relaxed. That's what, oh, let me go there. Wait, wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa. Let me, oh, oh, wait, you guys are going, moving too fast here. Let me go back. There's a lot going on here. Um, let's go with <laughs> Mr. B is in the building. Bryson is in the building. He says, I watched WrestleMania 40 for the whole weekend. I didn't even know there was still a WrestleMania. <laughs> is there still WrestleMania? I did not know that. Um, Bryson, I guess you had a lot of fun with that since it, you watched it the whole weekend. Um, Lisa says she went to, uh, she went, I went to my nephew's uh, rites of passage ceremony yesterday. Oh, that must be interesting. Oh, wow. That must have been cool. And Jensen said, I went to see Angel Blue in La Rani at the Met. Ah, oh, that must have been nice. Ah, oh, everybody's out and about. Oh, Gary watched, uh, res uh, he watched WrestleMania as well and college basketball. Wasn't that a great game? Oh, my goodness. South Carolina, right? Woo. That was some game. Uh, that was a streak, right? Not They didn't lose not one time this season. All my sports fans out there, all the sports people that know sports inside and out, you would know that information. Yeah, it was really cool. And Caitlin, uh, and there was a good shout out by the coach from South Carolina that gave Caitlin a beautiful shout out and said, "You thank you for putting our sport more on the map that was really beautiful uh hey dr tachi's in the building what's going on dr tachi i got me one of our cq sis keisha there she, that's what she did dr tachi got to meet some folks uh let's see here what's going on what's going on here okay i think i'm going through oh and lauren here we go now lauren says rest and relaxation or rest and relax, enjoying all the sports on. Um, go South Carolina, ladies and dawn. Yeah, South Carolina was amazing. Um, so I only got to watch half the game. I watched the end of it because I was out in the streets. <laughs> and um, Kristen, uh, sorry, Bryce is it. And Kobe, Kobe Rose defeats. Kobe Rose defeats Roman Reigns for undisputed universal champion. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know nothing about wrestling. Nothing at all about wrestling. That's like another, that's a foreign language. But Bryson, I'm glad you had a good time. And also Gary. Gary also watched wrestling. Uh, what else did you guys do this weekend? Good morning, Anthony. Anthony's in the building. He sends a good morning, Lauren. She says, oh, basketball and Paro Grand Rising. Yes, undefeated, Anthony says, undefeated South Carolina. Uh, Lawrence is amazing. Yes, sir. Correct, Ron. Thank you so much, Gary, for that. I needed that. You know, sometimes I spew out things that may not be correct. No, not often, but sometimes it happens. I need my, I need my fact checkers in the building to make sure I stay on the up and up. And... Uh, Serena says, I went to a vendor event and had a book signing there. It went great. Yesterday, I watched the NCAA championship. Congrats, Coach Stay, uh, Staley and the South Carolina B-Ball team. Everybody was watching basketball. Wow. Females basketball is taking on some new, uh, some new viewerships. It's awesome. That's beautiful. Nothing like the ladies playing. I always go to the um, Liberty Games. Uh, Liberty Games are not too far from my house, so I, that's where I I support the Liberty. Liberty, Liberty. No, that's a, that's another Liberty. Uh, I'm gonna go there. Like, no, 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 no. I shouldn't do that. Um, but Liberty, um, Liberty uh, basketball, Li New York Liberty here in New York. Oh, cool. So, uh, Serena, you did your book signing. That's awesome. 
And uh, what else is on here? What is you guys do? Uh, Charlene says, I watch South Carolina women's basketball do what they do. Uh, you must mean, <laughs> Gary, you watch. Gary, you watch Kobe Rose versus Roman Reigns, says uh, Bryson. Okay. All the wrestlers in the building. Are there any other folks in the building that love wrestling? Besides Bryson and Gary, are there any wrestlers, wrestling folks in the building? Okay. Bryson says, yes, I did love the whole weekend, especially night two. But Paul Heyman, HOF speech was amazing. Holy moly. Is it, is, is WrestleMania real? Or is it just, is it still just acting? Is it like a, a sport of acting? I don't know. Uh, hey, Miss Peggy's in the building. What's going on, Peggy? Time benders. Hey, love that I walked into a BB combo. <laughs> uh, G says, I do. Still ride for The Rock and The Undertaker. Whoa, there are some there are some uh, WrestleMania folks in the building. It's still acting, right? Dr. Tachi is still acting. Okay, here's something that happened just a little while ago before I came on. Uh, I think it's Jonathan Major. Jonathan Major uh, is not going to be sentenced to jail um, for his case. So that's uh, a good thing. I, I hope he um, takes this time to reclaim his um oh god his reputation and uh so bad that uh that whole situation happened with him and i hope he cleans up his act and uh, there's so much to be said i cannot i'm not even gonna go down that road but my thinking is um i think hopefully he'll choose his uh girlfriends more wisely um, but Dr. Sai says, are you, <laughs> we'll go back to, back to wrestling. Oh, and, um, Lauren says, oh, wow. I used to watch a little wrestling with family and I did like the undertaker. Um, I see here, look, <laughs> oh, I, I, G's go did I start something with G? Cause you know, Gwendolyn's going to go there. She says, look, if Robert Downey can do all he did and get movies with Marvel, dot, 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 say no more. <laughs> Shirley says, okay, um, Shirley says, I've been a basketball fan since I could walk. I tried out for the WNBA during there, um, but I got sick with thyroid, um, Graves' disease. Wow, really, Shirley? Holy moly. Oh, wow. I tell you, I learn something more about each one of you guys every day. Wow. So sorry to hear that, Charlene. Yep. Oh, wow. Born, born to play basketball. I love when girls say, I was born to play basketball. Dudes always play basketball for the most part. Even though I have two left feet, so I couldn't play. I'm a horrible bat. I could never play basketball. My my brother has that gift. He went, He played college ball. He played for Jersey State and did very well. Uh, one of their star players and his son is doing very good and uh, at basketball. And uh, so he runs on that side of the family. Not I. I have not a basketball stitch in my body. Oh, stitch. That would be bad. That would be baseball. Neither can I play baseball either. I can only play handball. For the most part, <laughs> um, handball is what I played. Uh, okay, uh, Gary, Jason, uh, I saw that brought back mad memories. Okay, looking at what you guys are saying in here. Okay, believe it or not, I played. L L L what, Lisa, you played basketball? Can anyone in this room see Lisa playing basketball? I, how long did you play, Lisa? Did you play for a week? Did you play for a month? Or did you really play? <laughs> you know, I'm going to put you on the spot. 
Lisa says she played basketball. How many other women in this community played basketball? How many women in this community played basketball besides Charlene? And now we learned our wonderful Lisa. Yeah. Um, that's how he says, wow, Charlene, I hope you are feeling better. Yeah. Wow. So what else is in the news? Let's go some headlines. Uh, so we definitely did that. Let's go to what else is happening in the world. I do have a something to recommend to you all. And um, if you get a chance to, I have found this a very good discussion. And obviously my Saturdays and Sundays, I try to just chill back and relax and, and look at movies or um, look at YouTube channels and, you know, streaming on YouTube and what's going on there. Um, so anyway, I, I came across on YouTube uh, from the Harvard Divinity School um, based on the book. I have the book because I'm reading the book now um, because of this discussion. The book is called The Hidden Roots of White Supremacy. Anyway, they have a discussion at Harvard Divinity School. It is called The End of White Christian America, a conversation with E.J. Uh, uh, Dion and uh, Robert P. Jones, who uh, wrote the book, The Hidden Roots of White Supremacy. Fascinating conversation. If you want to understand why rural America feels the way they do, and how rural America has lost, let me just rephrase that, how they've infused Christianity with their Christian nationalism. Really interesting conversation. Uh, and it talks about the history, uh, takes you back to parts of Jim Crow, it talks about the KKK, and it talks about this whole little like passage uh, history um, in the discussion of the end of white Christian America. And I did not know this stat until I heard it. Uh, in the beginning, when Obama took office, 52% of white evangelicals or Christians, white Christians in America declared that they were Christians, 52%. 52 of the of the you know American voting population was fifty two percent. Now, after all these years, after he after Obama left office, it dropped to forty seven percent, and now it's currently at forty two percent. That so the white Christian um, voting block is dying out, and that and that that explains a lot of the. Um, anger and anguish among Christians. Uh, not, and this is not, again, this is not Christians that follow, it's a hard way to say it, uh, Christians that are not born again believers, let's say. Um, these are Christ people that just call themselves Christians. So, uh, um, you know, there are some, in America, Christian is almost like being American in some in some circles. But it's an interesting topic. Uh, if you want to see a great discuss, hear a, a great discussion. The end of white Christian America: a conversation with E.J. Um, D. and uh, Robert P. Jones. I think you will find it fascinating as much as I did. Uh, what else is in here? Let's, let's see what you guys. What are you guys saying? Okay. <clears throat> so let's see here. Uh, Going back to the sports question, since you guys took so long to answer. <laughs> so let's go back. Let's go back. That's what's up, Lisa and Ron Funny. Okay, there we go. Uh, I was active literally. literary, uh, Really? Um, G was active in literary sports, poetry, writing, and speech and debates. Yeah, Gwendolyn and I love debates. Uh, I definitely can see Lisa playing basketball. Oh, really now? Can you, you, I can't see Lisa playing basketball. Hey, Rambo's in the building all the way from India. 
all the way from India. Our brother from India is in the building. He is in the building. Mr. Rambo is in the building all the way from there. Over. In it. Okay, here we go. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Uh, Lisa, uh, no one believes. in no one, Well, there are some people that believe you, Lisa. <laughs> Um, here's a quick, here's some, is it terrible that I say I don't give two dams how rural America feels if it is anti-me? Woo, Dr. Tachi went there. Whoa, I don't care. I don't give two dams, not one, two, not one, but two. <laughs> um, Here's something that Lisa says. My fam my Southern families are big wrestling people. I have met some of the greats. Andre the Giant was a standout of mind. Nice. All you people into wrestling. I wrestling and basketball. Okay, okay. Um, back to the now that we're caught up, now we're back to the Christian stuff. Um uh, <laughs> this is uh <laughs> One more thing for the, for the for the wrestlers in the building. Um, the Photog, the best soap opera that has been going on for years. It is the beginning of something new and fresh since Vince is not there anymore. Still doing this wrestling. You're controlling the conversation. You're still in the wrestling. Okay, here we go. Moving right along. Moving right along. I must take control. Uh <laughs> Look at you guys are really into this. Um, G says, I loved hanging out at the WWE New York in Times Square. Such great memories there. And I have my memorable style. Memorabilia, sorry. <laughs> memorabilia style. Still, still, still. Let's get it right, Ron. Ron. Read it out right. Uh, okay. Um, Dr. Tachi says, I managed this, I managed the sports teams at my high school track swim and football i did not know all of you guys were connected to sports my community loves sports wow wow okay rambo said what is rambo saying rambo is saying something here he says so good to see you after a long time evolution from instagram to youtube and it's growing rapidly yeah okay let me check on the time okay we're good we're still good for time we are still on time. You know, we got to make sure we are doing the right things here. Um, Rashawn says she, she, she's just joining in. She says she watched WrestleMania last night also. Holy moly. I, hmm. I am learning so much about this community. I don't know if, what to say. <laughs> wow. Get out of here. WrestleMania is a big thing here. Oh. Okay, so the next next topic, since y'all didn't even care about the Christian conversation, but anyway, <laughs> that was the book. If you, if you, I'm sorry, that was the YouTube video. If you want to see that YouTube video, there it is. Check it out. It's, I think it's worth checking out if you're interested in that stuff. Um, Eclipse Across a, a man, uh, America. Uh, again, who who is going out today to see the Eclipse? And where are you going? Where are you going? Okay, where will you be to see the eclipse today? That's a better way to phrase it. Um, there we go. Um, okay, okay. Thank you, Peggy. Has Peggy made a statement? Actually, modern Christianity is fully rooted in white supremacy and misogyny. So, is a real Christian someone that actually tries to be a good human? Oh, oh, that's a question. That's a loaded one, Peggy. That's a loaded question. Um, Gary's back to sports. I played football, played basketball for fun. My brother played in college, ran also, and been in a fan of a lots of sports. My new venture is golf. Oh, you and my son will get along. I can't play golf. I don't know how to play golf. I just know how to go to the driving range. That's it. I do not know how to play golf. I need to learn. It's never too late. Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, there we go. Anthony is also a big, huge sports fan. 
photographing MotoGP this weekend. Nice. Anthony, we're going to have to schedule you to come on. You know that, right? We need to have you on our Wednesdays, our Wisdom Wednesday. Adrian, son, you're going to have to teach me how to play golf. <laughs> It's, th that would be another father and son thing to do, right? <laughs> let's, let's do it. Uh, we haven't had our father and son days in a long time. Uh, uh, okay, now, I'm, for those that don't know, my son is a preacher. <laughs> not, not to say he's a preacher. He's a pastor. Um, Adrian says, there is a difference between being a Christian and a true disciple of Christ. Ooh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Christians, it, being labeled Christian is a total different thing. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, Anthony, yes, we will be talking. Um, Lauren is another fanatic. <laughs> I'm a huge sports fanatic. Played sports my entire life. Learned how to swim at the age of one and have been swimming ever since. Did, every, did very well on my school swim team for years. My son also played, was a swimmer, is a swimmer, was a swimmer at his high school. Right, Adrian? Were you the captain of the swim team? I can't remember, but I know you were on the swim team. Uh, Anthony, you're supposed to be down here at my studio. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, he's here with us. He's here with us. Um, Brooklyn Tech, stand up. That's right. My son swam at Brooklyn Tech. He, yeah, I remember his one of his first jobs was working at the pools, being a uh, a lifeguard. Yeah, I remember those days. I remember them like they were yesterday. Uh, uh, Lisa says, I am a bit concerned that the Iran threat to in conjunction with everyone outside looking at this dag, dang eclipse. The, the Iranians are not going to do anything. I don't think. I don't think. Anything's possible, but I don't think anything's going to happen. Uh, okay. La, 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 la. okay. Today is Motivation Monday. It is Motivation Monday. It is time to get motivated. I, I should have probably announced that in the very beginning. So all those folks that happened to tune in, they would know what we're, where we're going. <laughs> I guess so caught up at all with you guys. I forgot to do my, oh, no, we're still doing track. We're still good. Uh, why? She says, why am I not talking about the eclipse? I am. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get the folks to talk about it, but they don't want to. They're talking sports. <laughs> Remember, I'm just a moderator. This audience is kind of like, it just moves on its own. That's what's beautiful about this Touch Base Daily. It's really just touching base daily. We just touch based on what's going on in our worlds. That's why we're here. We're just touching base. However, though, can I just say on the note before I go into uh, our Motivation Monday, guys, make sure that you do not look at the sun during the eclipse. Well, first of all, you shouldn't look at the sun even when it's not an eclipse. But it's even more dangerous when it is an eclipse. Uh, Adrian says, uh, is 90% eclipse worth going outside to see? Yes. Yes, it will be worth going to see. Uh, you really should be able to just look outside your window and you will see that the sky, well, the everything will start to get dark. That's what's beautiful. That's the, that's the experience. You don't want to look at the eclipse unless you have glasses. But if you have glasses... Shoot, I can't find my glasses. I forgot to go dig for them. I know they're somewhere in one of those boxes because I always have a pair. Uh, but you want to make sure you wear your glasses. And uh, one of my uh, buddies who's going to be on here Wednesday, Madhavan, he is in uh, Maine right now um, getting ready to photograph the eclipse. So he'll be here on Wednesday to talk about it and, uh, and his photography. So we're going to have uh, some fresh fresh first-hand uh, experience information. Uh, G says, I'm going to watch the eclipse from my porch. All right. Uh, Rashawn said, it will be my first time seeing the eclipse. Really? 
This will be my third eclipse. No, fourth eclipse in my lifetime. Fourth. I saw the one in 2017. I saw the one in, was I in high school? I think I was in high school. And then the last one before that was in elementary school. When I was in its sixth grade, I think it was. Sixth grade. That would be 1976, I think it was. Okay. So it's been, yeah, I've only seen it. I've only seen it three times. This would be the fourth. This would be the fourth today. Um, she says, uh, really, um, people are really talking about the NASA satellites going up. N you know, for those that don't realize that there is a, there is a solar eclipse every year and a half. Did y'all know that? Every year, that's why all the folks that are freaking out and like, oh, doomsday, it's biblical proportion information, the world's coming to an end, and everything is going to happen because of the eclipse. I hate to break the news to all the, the doomsdayers. There's an eclipse anywhere around the world every a, a, a solar eclipse like what we're having today is every year and a half <laughs> so no doom has happened most of the time it's over the ocean most of the time it's over the deserts most of the time it's in obscure places the world is big mostly water but every year and a half there's an eclipse now, this is the last eclipse over the United States, and I think for 26 years, right? For 26 years, something like that. So that's all. Like people are freaking out like, oh, it's going over all these biblical named cities. Have you seen the TikTokers? TikTok. Oh, maybe a lunar eclipse. Uh, the lunar eclipse, I, I forgot how many times. There's a lunar eclipse, I do believe, every also every year and a half. I think they are interchangeable. I'm not sure any scientists in the room, but I do believe there is a lunar eclipse and there's a solar eclipse. The solar eclipse is every year and a half. Don't know about the lunar, though. Okay, let's get to it. Let's get to what we're here for. It's Motivation Monday. It's Motivation Monday. Let's get it going. Let's get it going because I just want to share a couple of thoughts to motivate you this week. The Grateful Road. That's what we're talking about today. The Grateful Road. And uh, here's a great um, quote from um, our wonderful James E. Faust. A grateful heart is a beginning of greatness. It is an expression of hum humility. It is a foundation for the development of such virtues as prayer, faith, courage, contentment, happiness, love, and well-being by James E. Foss. Number one, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And if you want to chime in, you're more than welcome to. But probably wait to the end. That way we can just keep going through. Okay, make sure. And if you have a chime in, if you have a question, put a cue before the words so that we know it's a question. Okay, so a grateful heart. Gratitude is not merely a fleeting emotion. It's a state of being. When our hearts overflow with gratitude, we acknowledge the blessings we receive, both big and small. Number two. Expression of humility. That's what gratefulness is. An expression of humility. Gratitude humbles us. It reminds us that we are interconnected parts of a larger tapestry of existence. Love that. And then three. And we'll dive into these. The foundations for virtues. Gratitude is the foundation for virtues. One, prayer. 
A grateful heart naturally turns to prayer. Gratitude opens the channels of communication with the divine. We speak guidance. We sorry, we seek guidance, so, a solace, and connection through heartfelt prayers. Gratitude is the base of faith. Gratitude fuels faith. When we approach, when we appreciate life's life's gift, oh, let's start again. When we appreciate life's gifts, we trust that more blessings await us. Faith blossoms from soil of gratitude. Next, courage, gratitude emboldens us. When we're thankful for the challenges we've overcome, we find the courage to face new ones. Gratitude whispers in our ear, you've conquered before, you can conquer again. Next one, contentment. Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have. It cultivates contentment, a rare treasure in a world <laughs> perpetually chasing more, 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 right? We live in a world that wants more, 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 but it makes us content. It leaves us content because we're thankful. We're grateful. Happiness. Gratitude is the secret ingredient of happiness. It transforms mundane moments into celebrations. When we count our blessings, Joy dances in our hearts like that. Next, love. Oh, yes. Gratitude deepens love. It makes us cherish relationships, recognize the souls who enrich our journey. Love thrives where gratitude blooms. And last but not least, well-being. A grateful heart positively impacts our well-being. It reduces stress, enhances resilience, and fosters emotional balance. Gratitude is soul medicine. And as we conclude, let's let me put that up there. Let's nurture our hearts with gratitude. It's not just a feeling. It's a compass guiding us toward greatness, humility, and a life rich in virtues. Daily, we can choose the grateful road. So I hope that gives some folks some direction. I needed that. This, you know, it's so funny. When I, you know, I try to plan these things in advance based on my, you know, some good coaches or some coaching around me that I am well prepared. So I prepare in advance. And today was one of those days I woke up this morning and I was feeling some kind of way. I was like, what is wrong? I just felt so, ugh. I just felt so like, what is going on? What is not working? And I began to think on the things that were not working. I began to think on the things that weren't working in my, you know, working in my, what I thought was my direction. And I was so glad that I had put together this whole thing for you guys and in diving into being grateful because I needed that today. I don't know if you needed that, but I know I needed needed it. I needed to remember, you know, when you get when you get the anxiety of, oh, I should be doing this, or I should be doing that, or I should have accomplished this by now, or I should be somewhere where you think you should be and you're not there, but you think you should be there and you get a little frustrated. But sometimes you think you're just spinning the wheels. I was talking to uh, Chris this morning. I was like, sometimes I just feel like I'm spinning my wheels. But you know how to calm all of that down? Because it helped me when I was thinking about this for you guys. Thankfulness, being grateful, being grateful for all that you have accomplished, being grateful for the people in your life, 
being grateful to the people for the people that love you and the people you love. Being grateful for your body parts, being able to see, hear, smell. Being grateful. And it really does change your outlook. The moment we can settle ourselves down to be to look at different parts of our lives and say, mm, you know what? Today may be a little rough, but you know what? I'm grateful. What says you? Let me see what you guys are saying. Oh, let me see. Let me go through here. I see y'all. Now y'all late with the eclipse. It's this thing on delay. <laughs> <laughs> is it on delay? Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Gwendolyn says, we're often trained to focus on what we don't have. And we haven't done versus, and we haven't done versus celebrating what is. We are blessed beyond measure. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Anthony says, we need it every day, even on the days when you feel like you don't. It's now in your re, uh, reserves for the day that you th uh, that th that you do. Yeah, that you do. Thank you. Yeah, guys, be grateful. It is such an antidote. It really does help you, especially uh, a lot of folks in here, entrepreneurs, work from home, creatives. I could say pastors and ministers. Sometimes you're feeling like, what, why are you doing this, right? Why are we doing this stuff? But guess what? Every little bit counts. Let's be grateful for the little. Because believe it or not, some of us have done some great things. We just need time to think about it. Um, G says, such a timely message, Ron. I was blasting. Be grateful yesterday while working in the flower bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have to be grateful. Not because it's a commandment, but it's just good thought. It's a good foundation for life to be grateful. Anthony says, count your blessings right after you count your losses. It puts things in perspective. I like that, Anthony. I like that one. I do, I do. Count your blessings right after you count your losses. It's okay to acknowledge your losses, but don't dwell there. Get up and keep moving. Get up and move on. Yeah. We stumble, we fall, but we have to be grateful. Okay. Okay. I, was that anyone else on grateful? Does anyone else have anything to share? How what was gratefulness done for you? I'm curious. What happens when you're grateful? Laura says, I'm grateful for that, Ron. I needed that. There you go. How does gratefulness help you or impact your life? Like I said, this morning, I was, I was feeling some kind of way. And then I began to, as I was, you know, putting this thing together and I'm reading it and, re, re, you know, revisiting some thoughts. And I said, wow, I did, I, you know, the, at, the, at the base of all the virtues, you know, the, the great foundation, virtual, virtual foundations is gratitude on every one of them. I had to share that with you guys because it it really did. I mean, well, obviously I had it planned. It just all worked out. But yeah, how is gratefulness working for you? I'm curious. G does. I know she tells me all the time. G says, that's awesome, Anthony Rowland. I keep a grateful journal. How many people have a grateful journal? I always attempt to have a grateful journal. You know, I say, you should have a grateful journal. Excuse me, this is a rule of thumb. I learned this from Oprah, believe it or not. I'm not a big Oprah fan, but 
when you get wisdom from someone, you gotta get when you just take it and you and you run with it. And um, I start and I and I stop and I start and I stop. But what I do do, I may not write them down, but at the end of the day, I say thank you. It is important to say thank you and to reflect on the day. Yeah, gratitude is king. Gratitude is like the biggest of all currencies. Um, Amparo says, wear gratitude like a cloak and it will feed every corner of your life. Rumi, yes, yes. Look at y'all. I want to know, what does gratefulness do for you? Being grateful, what does it do for you? Rashawn says, I'm grateful for the blessing I have been receiving. The blessings. Yeah. Um, Anthony says, I have a blessings jar. I write my blessings down on a post-it, fold it up, and put it in the jar. Every January 1st, I read them all. Wow. Anthony, I like that. I should put one of these right on my on my desk here. A blessing jar. Hmm. I think that's a good idea. See the beauty the beauty of being in a community like this is that you can learn from something from someone else that's practicing something that's good, positive, encouraging, and then it makes you it spurs you on to say, yeah, I could do that. What else does it do for you before we close out? We got five minutes. Five, well, not exactly. <laughs> not exactly five minutes, but we got we got time for a couple, right? Right? Cool. Let me go past here and see if I got everything. I see all the clip stuff still going on in the background there, but you guys are okay. You guys have moved on. You caught you caught up with the conversation. It is motivation Monday. It is. Motivation Monday. And we're here to be motivated. And I am here to motivate you. And as I motivate you, I also motivate myself. We're all in this together. We're in this together. Be motivated this week. And, uh, and share some gratitude with other people. When you see someone that's a little down and out, give them a little encouraging word of gratitude. You don't even have to tell them to be have gratitude. All you have to do is share something you're thankful for. All you have to do is share something you're grateful for. You know, someone's down and they're feeling a little out, and you walk over and say, "Man, I had a rough week last week, but I'm, you know, things things really worked out last week, and I'm grateful." You know what? <laughs> I'm alive to see the eclipse this today. I'm going to check out the eclipse today. I'm grateful. There's some folks that didn't wake up this morning. They could not find, they were not able to see it. They're not going to be able to see it today because someone did not wake up today. We are grateful. So anyways, I hope you're grateful. And take that and spread it with, spread it to the people you love. Spread it to your coworkers. Spread it to your, your clients. Spread it to the people around you. Okay. Just have a couple of announcements, and we're out of here. For those that are in the Patreon community, we have coming up on the 18th, how to use smartphone editing apps. So if you are in the Patreon community, oh, speaking of Patreon community, let me pop this on for a moment. And let me take this and put this in which mode, paid mode, paid member mode. Let's try that real cool, 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 cool. Let me share with you guys that so you guys see what that is I'm talking about. And uh, so on the Patreon page, la, 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 la. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Patreon page. So on the Patreon page, which is right here. If you want to, if you want the whole article, uh, I should say the whole blog post that I put out today, um, the Grateful Road, you'll find that in the Patreon page for the Patreon members. 
So that's there for you guys in the Patreon. And uh, also, if, if you got if you guys missed last week's t- uh, a couple of weeks ago, tips on how to choose an event photographer, that's in there as well. And I'll be adding some more links to also some of these uh, um, YouTube channels that we are on. And and also, if you have not, if you happen to come here late and you're this, you're late to this, we will be on again on Indie Soup. Indie Soup. For those that don't know, Indie Soup. In there, is that? Let me. Can I get that? Let me out. Oops. I, did I just mess that up? Did I just mess it up? There we go. Indie Soup, y'all. Check out Indie Soup. The subscriptions are doing great. Check that out as well. And uh, I won't get in trouble because Indie Soup is where we are at. So check on Indie Soup. We'll be. I think Dr. Tachi will be there at four o'clock today on our repeat. So if you haven't, if you missed most of this, you'll see the rerun this evening on Indie Soup. And also subscribe to Indie Soup. And if you are new here, subscribe here as well. Subscribe. So that way, and if you liked today's episode, hit the like. So that way, the algorithms say, oh, maybe we should keep this guy on here for, (laughs) maybe we should have him on. Maybe we should direct traffic to this dude. Um, But yeah, so hit the like. Make sure you do that as well. Uh, also in the announcements, uh, one more banner there for you guys is uh, our Soho Gallery and Street Photography Hop. That will be this Saturday. Sorry, oh, that's wrong. That should say this Saturday. That should be saying Saturday, April 27th. So Saturday the 27th from 2 to 4. That's not this week. It is April 27th. That's when we'll have our Soho Gallery Street Photography Hop in New York City. So if you want to get, bring out your cameras and fellowship and connect with some folks for other photographers, come out. If you have your smartphone, that's just that's good enough. Come on out. Okay. And I think we got it all. And it, it, I'm doing good. I'm doing good on time. I am doing good on time. Uh, let me see here. Happy Cass says, happy, happy Motivated Monday and Day of Reflection and Recharge It Today. Um, G is saying to Anthony, write, writing is therapy. I create time to let all the thoughts free. That's right. I love that. The journey journal. Sorry. Um, very grateful to you, Ron, for sharing the encouraging and an elevating message about gratitude. Hi, Aya. How you doing? Aya. Uh, who's in the, who's in the Instagram world? Instagram folks, if you're in the Instagram world, come on over to YouTube. That's who we are. YouTube, just go to YouTube and click Touch Base Daily and then subscribe. Come on over. Okay. Amparo says, yeah, see, Amparo loves that too. Love the blessing jar. I like that. I I got my little stickies here. They're always on my desk. I got my little stickies right here and I think that would be a good idea. To put my blessings in a jar. I like that. But I think I'm going to, I think I will use mine. I will go back into my jar every birthday. How about that? I think instead of the first of the year, it will be my birthday. On my birthday, I will go in, into my blessing jar. Anthony, you just put me onto something. The blessing jar. I like that idea. I hope someone else runs with it. Um, I see here, G says, uh, Empower with the Photog, I have heart-shaped post-its. I got to create a jar now. Look, I think the jar idea is going to spread. Anthony, the jar idea is going to spread. I am going to put the jar right on my desk. There's a space waiting for it right over here. We have a blessing in dreams box at home. Really? Shirley has a, a blessings and dream box. I like these ideas. That's how we got to do, y'all. We got to be encouraged. We got to stay grateful. And on that note, guys, thank you for joining me today. I hope you live a wonderful, grateful day. Hey, Tanya. What's going on? So good to see you. She's saying hello, saying the hellos, the hellos. Tanja. 
what's going on. And Dr. Tachi, Dr. Tachi's in the building. Janice says, loving the grateful blessing jars. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to have my blessing jar. I'm going to make one right now. I'm going to have some tomato soup. Because <laughs> that's what one of my jars will be in. Take that tomato soup, that vegan soup today. That's going to be part of my lunch. And I am going to use that jar. I'm going to clean it out. It's going to be my bless, my grateful jar. I will put my things I'm grateful for in. Mine is next week. Not mine is next. Oh, sorry. Mine is next to my desk. Yeah, Laura says this is inspiring. Look at that. That's what this is for. She says, hopefully I will see you at MVAAFF at the Martha's Vineyards African American Film Festival. I enjoy your smile every day. Oh, see, I just love that. I love it. I hope I'm there. I hope I'm there this year. We'll see. We'll see. Um, that was a lot of fun photographing that beautiful event. Yes. Okay. It's 12:14. I need to get off of here. Guys, thank you again. Have a wonderful week. Make it a week week full of gratefulness. And I will see you tomorrow when we do our tip Tuesday. Tip Tuesday y'all is tomorrow. See ya.